It says reconnecting, but I can see a blurry version of you in the background behind where it says reconnecting. <laughs> Am I in? I can see you. What the fuck? Hang on, let me let me just close <laughs> it out. Okay. Hello. Okay. Except for my headphones. What the hell is happening? Dude, our tech just decides some of what these is happening like, times today? that it just hates us. Can you hear me? All right, can you hear me? Yep, hello, I can hello, hear hello. you. Can Watch, you it's, doing, it's doing the echo, isn't it? That would just be the, the cherry on top. Test, test, test. Hello, hello. No, it's actually not, okay. surprisingly. <laughs> Good God, all right. Oh, my God. What's going on, everybody? Critic Common Man in the tens in here, back at it again with another review. Um, up today, Netflix's The Trial of the Chicago 7. This one came out a few weeks ago. We're a little slow on recording it, but the world has been crazy lately, and we're just kind of getting around to it, so we still want to put up a, uh, a review of this one. Um, as with every critic in the Common Man review, this is your spoiler warning. It's been out for a while, so no excuses. Go watch it. We're going to be a, uh, doing a full review here with spoilers. Not that there's really all that much to spoil, considering this is like a historical dramatization and is basically just recounting a, a hit, something that happened 40 years ago. Um, 30? When was it? The 70s? So yeah, like 50 years 50 ago. 50 years. Crap. Wow. Late 60s. Um, yeah, I had not heard anything about this one, Chris. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen anything about this, and then it just sort of popped up on Netflix. Killer cast. Um, the yeah. story itself, I mean, obviously, this... this whole event took place in 1968 and 69 i believe um neither of us well you were i was not alive at that point um so Throwback. it's it's kind of a, a testament to the casting because i feel like that's really what drew me into this was you see you know what's his name Redmayne and uh and sasha baron sasha cohen baron whatever sasha baron cohen uh, you see them uh, in this and it, and it kind of kind of takes you into it so what did you think, man? Initial reactions, love it, hate it, the trial of the Chicago 7. So my first reaction after watching the intro was that the editing and the pacing of this movie is pretty fucking great. Um, it keeps you super entertained for pretty much the entire movie. Like the, the way it, it tells the story through flashbacks as the story is being told is yep. very, uh, it's just entertaining to watch. And I think that the, like I said, the editing, the pacing, the acting, the cinematography, everything is there. Um, <clears throat> I think that my, the only downside for me, because overall I thought the movie was really good. The only downside for me is that it felt like there wasn't a, a an ending. It just, it, it, yeah, there was nothing really to like, we didn't even get the end of the trial. Like we were just kind of thrown into the beginning of this trial. And then, and then it gave us like three or four paragraphs of like, this is what happened after. Yeah, I it just, gives you the cheesy so-and-so went on to be yeah. a dog washer. It's like, okay. It was, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that was kind of a cop-out, in my opinion. But um, It was pretty unsatisfying. Yeah, exactly. That's Because the movie itself was good. I liked watch, like I liked the process, and I fucking hated that judge, and I wanted to see something yeah. satisfying, and I wanted to see them win, and I wanted to, you know... All that aside, you know, because historically, I don't know how accurate this was or not, but, you know, I imagine the judge really was like that, and they probably didn't get their happy ending because of the time period, but... Still, I feel like there was a better way to deliver the ending of the movie, and I feel like the movie completely dropped the ball on uh, on that ending there. So, Yeah, I would say that I liked it. I'm not going to say that I loved it. A lot mm. of people are pretty high on this movie, and I think a lot of that has to do with who was in it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It is a big cast, no doubt about it, and there is something to be said about that. I didn't dislike it. I, I liked the movie. It was just, you know... I don't know if you ever saw that Waco miniseries mm -hmm. on uh, Netflix. It was right, right before we started doing this podcast that came out. And it was basically all about the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas. And I don't know if you're familiar with that whole thing where yeah. it was, you know, the cult and they get caught in the fire. Okay. I mean, that to cult. me was a little bit more entertaining version. Yeah. Yeah. That to me was a little <laughs> more entertaining version of kind of a historical dramatization. This one was interesting in that... You were interested to see what happens, but like you said, with a little bit of an unsatisfying ending, uh, the event itself, because it happened so long ago, and because we were kind of, you know, we weren't really, no one really talks about that very much going on right now, I was a little bit 
bored with it kind of throughout. Yeah. Um, solid acting all throughout, like you said, good. Uh, the movie itself cinematically was, was interesting how they did the flashbacks and kind of told the story that way. I liked it. I don't think that I loved it. And I think part of that is just because at the end of the drama. day, it's about a trial. Yeah. And, you know, law and, and, you know, the judicial system kind of seeing into that is not always all that exciting. Really, the best parts of the movie were when, like, the courtroom was being interrupted. And, right. you know, it was it was like the comedy is kind of what made the movie. And I think that the rest of the movie didn't live up to the expectation that the intro kind of set forth as far as the pacing and the just the climax of the film really because we didn't read it there wasn't a climax there was just a long courtroom scene after another just one after another after another and then the movie was done we didn't even see the end of the court uh, of the of the right. of the trial so i don't know i i, I agree I, I think that it lost my attention at some parts um and overall i think the film could have been better um, but the acting was great. I mean, I, I did enjoy it. I, yeah, and I feel like this is going to end up being another one of those movies a lot like uh, The Devil All the Time, mm -hmm. where I feel like a lot of people are going to maybe give it a little bit higher credit than or more credit than they would had it been a different cast. Yeah. Like this movie, if you take away all the star power and, and you just replace, replace it with good actors and actresses, I'm not saying take away the, the good acting. But if you had good actors or actresses and you didn't know about them, if you didn't see Eddie Redmayne in the in the trailer or Sasha Baron Cohen in the trailer, would you still think this movie was as great as it was? I think I would still like it, but I think a lot like The Devil All the Time where to me, and you can watch our review of that, it's, it's on our channel, that movie to me was actually very boring. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people give that movie more credit than I think it deserves because of the fact it was Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson yeah. and, had, and it had these big names in it that... Certain people, I think, kind of felt like they had to say they liked, which, you know, whatever. That's a different conversation. But I do think that I do think that the trial of the Chicago 7, its, it's shining moment, its big factor that it had going for it was the cast. It had a strong cast and an interesting cast in how they all acted with each other. The chemistry was strange, but it, it worked. I liked yeah. it. Um, I, I didn't think anybody stood out as being a bad actor or actress, so it definitely had that going for it. I think that the story itself was a little bit dry but i get i get why they picked it because uh it's not that far off from things that are going on in the world right now that's what you i was can, gonna you can say definitely make the relation i was gonna say that i was i was gonna bring that up um i think it's important to note that this is one of those films that and i've talked about it before you know that historically speaking what is going on in the world is reflected through our films the things that we see happening in our world become sort of a tool uh, a tool for filmmakers to kind of express their own thoughts and their own emotions of current events through their filmmaking. Um, and, uh, and, and just seeing the way that things are going in the world today and seeing this film being made, I think is a reflection of that. Um, so it, it definitely felt real, if that makes sense. The, the movie yeah. resonated, I think with a lot of viewers. And I think that might be one of the reasons that it gets a uh, higher, ratings um because people understand it um well and it was a, it was a significant historical event mm -hmm. i mean these people were fighting going to the vietnam war it's pretty well known that there was not a lot of support for that war at all mm -hmm. um we were in a war that we didn't have most people didn't even really know why we were in it and you know it, it just didn't really make a lot to of stop sense stop the communist people didn't want to fight people didn't yeah people didn't want to throw their lives away for for a cause that they didn't believe in and i think uh there's, this is definitely a bit of a polarizing film because I think depending on what side of that coin you're on, some people I think from from back then had the perspective that oh you know you're if you're an anti-war person then then you're un American and you shouldn't be here and and then Call there's me. other people who are like as we saw in this were rallying together and saying we shouldn't be in this war and we don't yeah. want to fight um, standing up to the government but you can definitely see and good on Netflix I don't know how far in advance Netflix had this movie planned but it definitely fit. Uh, it was fitting for the times to kind of look back and say, man, these kind of things have been going on for a long time. Yep. Um, it was kind of a bleak reminder or a grim reminder of that. Um, what did you think of the cast? Because that really is the biggest statement, I think, for this movie. Did you think that everybody worked well together? Were you surprised by any of the, the choices? So uh, for me personally, the biggest surprise in this movie was uh, the actor that played Newt Scamander in Fantastic Beasts. Um, yeah. I yeah, Eddie Redmayne. Is that, is that his name? Um, yep. 
he is a British actor, and holy shit, his American accent is like spot on. I was yeah, good. blown away by that. Um, I actually I didn't know if he was American or British. I had to look it up because I couldn't tell. Um, I think they all did really really well at at like in there just the, the acting was just so good in this movie i i honestly believe that i i think it was top-notch acting from every single person especially um mr seal the uh the black guy that's in the film that's that's, oh, yeah. that's completely unrepresented and that in itself just blows me away in the sense that like that is probably shit that still happens today you know uh judges that are corrupt and unwilling to to kind of get off of their their power trip and and give people yeah. the you know what they deserve it's um yeah it's it's hard for me to see Sasha Baron Cohen as anything other than like Borat or Bruno or Ali G or whatever he was I, Abby in this right he was Abby one of the many e sound there was Rennie Abby Jerry Bobby there was a whole bunch of people with with the e sound at the end okay. but yeah he was Abby in this and I know they kind of made him sort of a hippie mm. uh, free spirit kind of comedic character so they they weren't trying to turn him into too serious right. of a role but I think it's just his look he's such a big kind of goofy looking dude um, and I got a lot of respect for him as a, as a comedian and the things that he's done. I thought Borat was hilarious. I know a lot of people think it's really stupid, and it is. But I, I got to give you know credit where credit is due for creativity. I thought that mm-hmm. was really funny. Um, but it was hard for me to take his character too seriously in this. I kind of felt like they maybe could have done a different actor for that. Yeah. Um, which is, I, I don't know, because sometimes it's like I feel bad saying that. Because he's, he's trying to, to do say something that he different. Can't, yeah, that he can't do something different. It's just I can't help the fact that when I see Sasha Baron Cohen in something like this, I see him as Borat or I see him as just kind of a goofy character. It's like His seeing acting it's like seeing Daniel Radcliffe in something that's not Harry Potter. You exactly, know? It's like, exactly. Yeah. Like Daniel Radcliffe trying to do some different movies. He was in that horror movie, like The Woman in the Black Dress, yeah. a long time ago. And you're just waiting for him to cast a spell the whole time. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and it's just you know I. I couldn't quite get past that. Eddie Redman, I thought, was great. He did a, he did a really good job. He was a convincing character. Um, and then everybody else, I thought, fit their roles very well. That guy, I always forget his name, the guy who was playing the judge, um, the oh, older dude. Oh, yeah, he's, he is, he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's a powerful actor. He's not um, in much. much uh, I mean, he's in stuff, but it not. he's not in a lot of, like, A-rated movies, you know, A-list. Right. I was... Marcy, come here. I was... Pleased with with the acting generally, like overall. I felt like everybody did a pretty good job kind of fitting into their roles. At the end of the day, it's not the most exciting topic. It's an interesting topic, mm-hmm. and there's a difference there. Interesting and exciting are not definitely not yeah. always the, the same thing. I mean, it's um, a so historical if you're, if you're drama. Okay with, you know, with, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's a drama. And you know, I feel like... I kind of have it out for a lot of drama movies a lot of times. I think I'm just a little bit of a simpleton in that (laughs) I kind of like my movies to be a little more fast-paced or Mm -hmm. a little more exciting, at least in some parts, and the drama genre generally doesn't. Um, But interesting movie, definitely fit the times. I'm I'm glad that we watched it. I don't know that I'll watch it again, but I can see why Netflix would put it out there. Overall, Mm -hmm. pretty good marks for this one. I didn't love it just because I thought it was a little bit boring, but I definitely liked it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's just it's important to see movies like this that showcase not just how far we've come with social issues and civil rights and things like that, but also how much longer of a march there is to to really get to where yeah I believe we need to be. Um, but this is, again, this is just one of those movies that reflects the times that we live in, and um, that's right. I wouldn't be surprised to see this being looked at 20 or 30 years from now on a, on a historical level um, to, as one of the movies that reflects its its period, if that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely could be because from what I, from everything I've been reading, this was pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean, this happened. This was a real thing. Of course, it was kind of spiced up a little bit, but not too much. I mean, this was really going on. Um, I, you know, it's interesting because you kind of think with everything going on in our world right now, you wonder 30, 40 years from now, uh, what kind of movies they'll be making that that kind of touch back on this, mm-hmm. you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, things with uh, George Floyd and, and the killings, these police killings, and then even just this election process being as crazy as it has been. Yeah. Um, at the time of our recording, you know, Joe Biden has already been nominated or, or uh, elected president at this point um, for a few days now. So it, it's very interesting. We live in... I would say pretty close to as equally as wild times. It's just domestic 
turmoil, Mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to turmoil in Vietnam. But we live in crazy times now, too, man. And like you said, it's interesting to see how far we've come, but at the same time, how far we have left to go. Yeah, agreed. Um, This one was received very well I, I think a little too well personally and and it's weird because again you got to rate these a, as a drama and as a historical drama too um, i think they could have spiced it up maybe a little bit more but the critic score on this one was a 91 percent mm-hmm. uh and the audience score mirrors that so another 91 percent. so 91s across the board that's pretty high um i think some of that has to do with the casting again i, I do think those names kind of bolster higher reviews whether or not you know, the movie generally deserved it. What do you think, man, before we jump into our current event, where do you rate the Chicago 7? Did you love it, hate it? What do you think? I did enjoy it. I did like the movie. I was invested pretty much from beginning to end. Um, I just wish that, like, just from a writing and story point of view, I really wish that there had been some sort of better delivery at the end because it, I, I again I feel like it dropped the ball it just kind of cut the movie out I think at at like the best part for a climax um and it's already a longer movie so I, I just I don't know it um I enjoyed everything so I have to put that you know take that into account when I'm rating it but I feel like it didn't finish I feel like the movie did not finish and that reflects negatively negatively for me personally as far as like its score so overall right. um i think i'm somewhere between a seven and a half and an eight for this um i really did enjoy the movie so i'm leaning towards an eight i think i'm gonna give it an eight i just wish i feel like i would have given this movie a much better score if it hadn't been for the fact that it just randomly cut out in the in the middle of yeah. the of the you know we just did we didn't see the end we didn't see and like I, I personally I, I hate it when movies put just a bunch of text at the end like and this is what would have happened if we had more time yeah. like okay like just cut out a scene in the middle and give us a scene showing what happened at the end like just <laughs> right like I don't know right and that's it so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with an eight yeah, I, I did I, really enjoy it I think that's a fair score I I hate giving the uh, right immediately I'm leaning at seven and a half and I hate that score because it's such a middle of the road like no risk score it's like when you give a movie a seven and a half what does that even mean it was an okay yeah. movie and, and that's kind of how i felt about this one c plus i think a lot of people really loved it and and i get that it had a, it was a big cast and i get it was a big budget movie um touched on some interesting things i yeah i don't know the actual trial part of it left something to be desired mm-hmm. um you know it was interesting how they recounted the enactment of the the riot and the clashing with the police but the actual trial itself i felt like never really ramped up and you never got to see enough of it and like you said then you're kind of cut short on the on the climax of the whole thing i I just the the really basic simple word for me on this one is i liked it i i think again if you take this movie and you give it a different cast i don't know that if you take out eddie redman if you take out sasha baron cohen i don't know that it gets as high of remarks um but a good movie overall i'm with you i'm gonna give it an eight as well as for a historical drama i'm gonna give you an eight as well for me historical dramatizations that kind of bump up a little higher would be things like the Waco series, which I know is different because it's a TV show. Chernobyl. The things that have a little bit more, a little bit more umph to them, a little bit more substance um, and a little bit more of a climax. So yeah, I'm good for that, man. I- I'm good for eights all around on this one, on the trial of the Chicago seven. Glad we watched it relatively, uh, you know, just a-, a decent film, a decent historical dramatization. And that's yeah. it. Um, you got anything else for this one, man, before we jump into our current event? No, I think I, I will say that that ending scene where they are reading the names was powerful and i i feel like the music they chose took took away from it it made it too cheesy um yeah i i wasn't like i I didn't feel the urge to get up and clap or anything you know what i mean it's like i didn't i don't know i just didn't quite connect with the characters enough they weren't very likable yeah none of them were really um and then yeah you get to the end and he starts reading the names and everyone's clapping and i'm like yeah "Eh, i I just i I don't know it didn't quite hype me up the way i was hoping it would but fair enough Fair enough. So that's it, guys. Trial of the Chicago 7. We clearly were, were we liked it. We didn't love it. Um, let us know what you guys think in the reviews down below. Drop a comment if we missed anything or if there's anything that you guys think that we should bring up on this. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, fair is fair if you loved it or hated the review. If this is your first time watching Critic and the Common Man, uh, jump over to our YouTube channel. Um, you're already on the video, so just click into our channel and see some of our other reviews. We do a also, lot of stuff. Also, since um, you're right here, you're already watching the video, just subscribe. Just just do, do it. it because we told you to. So there you go. The power of suggestion. 
Um, but yeah, check out what we got going on. Jump over to our Instagram, Crit Critic in the Common Man on Instagram. We got a lot of fun stuff going on there. Some funny posts, giveaways. Still eligible for a giveaway. We are almost yeah. at our, our number, so you got to do it pretty quick. Um, we're doing a 200 follower giveaway, and we are right around the corner from that. So check out our Instagram. Speaking you can of scroll Colts, down and find the post. It's super easy. Speaking of Colts, we have almost 200 people following us, Danny. So I know that's crazy. Thank you guys for that. We really appreciate the growth. Um, I fully credit all of that to Tenzin. Chris's dog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I believe that at least 150 of those people are here for him. Um, but yeah, that's it. So Trial of the Chicago 7. Our current event for today will be a little bit interesting, man. So this was kind of breaking a day or two ago. Johnny Depp has yes. been asked to leave the Fantastic Beasts series for good. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of things going on with him and Amber Heard. They have been in the news for some time. Um, very split opinions on that, obviously, depending on how, kind of how you fall here. Now, an interesting development as of today, I guess because he was able to shoot at least one scene before being asked to leave, Johnny Depp will receive his full $10 million salary wow. uh, for this movie. So he will be taking his $10 million and getting the fuck out of there. Probably happy to do so if they're willing to kick him off the set. Wow. But Really sad situation. You hate to see it. Uh, immediate thoughts for this, Chris. What do you think about uh, Johnny Depp being asked to to leave the Fantastic Beasts series once and for all? It sucks because I personally think Johnny Depp is an incredible actor, and I think he's an awesome person. But I've also read a lot of uh, news articles and stuff that he's kind of abusive. He, uh, I guess abusive is the wrong word, but he's... Um, he lives a very extravagant lifestyle and is not willing to compensate for yeah. that. Um, you know, like I was yeah. reading that he, his lawyer was telling him to stop spending money because he's going to go bankrupt because he spends like $50,000 on a bottle of wine like every other day. Uh, like he just, he likes, he likes to live, you know, he likes his money. And I think that it reflects poorly on him. And I think that because of that lifestyle, we're seeing a lot of things happen uh, on the surface level and under for him that are kind of starting to bubble over and affect his personal career, his actual career. And, and we're seeing that yeah. happen now. Well, and this this whole situation is so much about, like like everything that's going on right now, it's about the truth. What is the truth? Is the truth that, you know, Amber Heard has been has been abusing Johnny Depp and, and been abusive to him because that is absolutely a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. It's it is, not yeah. out of the realm of possibility that the man in the relationship is not capable of being abused. That's a stigma that definitely needs to go away. Or is the truth that, like you said, Johnny Depp has been living an extravagant lifestyle and not really worried about what other people think mm -hmm. and thinks he's on top of the world and untouchable and has been abusive. Um, it's really, it's about the truth. Like, I don't know him, um, so that's, I don't that's know the thing, that. You know? Right, and, and does Warner Brothers know enough about the truth to make the decision to cut him, or are they doing so to kind of save face uh, and try to appear better in the public eye? Mm -hmm. Hard to say. Hard to say. But um, they will be recasting him. So that's kind of weird, too. They'll be recasting him. So his character is not going to die off or be gone in these series. There's going to be a new Grindelwald or Grindelwald. I don't remember how you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but it won't be Johnny Depp anymore. I, I don't know. To be fair, I mean, I it was Colin Farrell at Depp first, so. Yeah, hey, I don't know that Johnny Depp brings anything to those movies that somebody else couldn't. No. You know, I, Johnny Depp to me is still the icon for being Captain Jack Sparrow. That's just what I see him as. I yep. know he's done a lot of other stuff. Some people think Edward Scissorhands. He's been in, what was it, like The Secret Garden or Secret something or other. That was pretty good, too. Secret Window or something I like that. I don't remember. Um, Johnny hey, Depp Secret is, Window. dude, he's one, of those, he's one of those guys that just skyrocketed to, like, world world-class yeah. fame i mean he johnny depp dwayne johnson kevin hart tom cruise brad pitt there's some of these names that are just they can't they can't go anywhere imagine being johnny depp and trying to go to the store you couldn't do it you couldn't do it man you would get mobbed anywhere in the world anywhere in the world you went you would get mobbed yeah. it's just it's rough and, and they get in these crazy these crazy relationships um i mean again does does warner brothers know enough to cut Johnny Depp from these movies, or are they just <laughs> doing so to appear, to, to do what the public thinks, to you know try to save face for the public eye? I don't know. I, I can't say. Um, I hope that he's able to figure it out. It's, it is it is sad that he's leaving this franchise, but, I mean, he's still getting paid. He's still getting his $10 million for this movie, even though he was only there for That'll a couple days about doing shooting. a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That'll be, that'll be about 50 bottles of wine for him, and that's it. That's it. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know, man. So you guys can look into this. Johnny Depp asked to officially leave the Fantastic Beast crew. He will no longer be a part of those movie series. They will be recast recasting Grindelwald and just kind of trying to pretend you guys didn't even notice. Um, <laughs> and that'll be it. So we'll see how this plays out. And hey, you, who knows, man, if Johnny Depp's able to, you know, win his case or, or come back and, and if it's determined that he was in the in the right. He has a lot of leeway to go to Warner Brothers and say, why was I cut mm -hmm. and, and potentially sue or something. So could be could be a little bit more messy yet. Um, we will see. But that's it, man. That's it. Our current event for today and our review of the trial of Chicago 7. You got anything else for the people today, Christopher, the good people watching us? Um, I object. I object. You're in contempt of court. I think there was about a hundred cases, a hundred or um, um, what is it? Cases of contempt of court, uh, or charges, charges of contempt of court in that movie. My God, that judge, that judge was brutal. That's it, guys. Yeah. The trial of the Chicago Seven and our fan and our uh, not so fantastic news for today. Johnny Depp is out of here. If you guys loved it, hate it, let us know in the comments. Go show us some love on the Instagram. Critic in the common man. Other than that, we are out of here. See you guys. Cue that music. Bang, Quick, Danny, bang, do a bang, dance. Bang, 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 bang. That's our music now. I'm gonna make that our music now. <laughs> right, that'll be that'll be about 50 bottles of wine for him, and that's it. That's it. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. So you guys can look into this. Johnny Depp asked to officially leave the Fantastic Beast crew. He will no longer be a part of those movie series. They will be recast, recasting Grindelwald and just kind of trying to pretend you guys didn't even notice. <laughs> um, and that'll be it. So we'll see how this plays out. And hey, you, who knows, man, if Johnny Depp's able to, you know, win his case or, or come back and, and if it's determined that he was in the in the right, he has a lot of leeway to go to Warner Brothers and say, why was I cut mm -hmm. and, and potentially sue or something. So could be could be a little bit more messy yet. Um, we will see. But that's it, man. That's it. Our current event for today and our review of the trial of Chicago 7. You got anything else for the people today, Christopher, the good people watching us? Um... I object. I object. You're in contempt of court. I think there was about a hundred cases, a hundred or um, um, what is it? Cases of contempt of court uh, or charges, charges of contempt of court in that movie. My God, that judge, that judge was brutal. That's it, guys. Yeah. The trial of the Chicago Seven and our fan and our uh, not so fantastic news for today. Johnny Depp is out of here. If you guys loved it, hate it, let us know in the comments. Go show us some love on the Instagram. Critic in the common man. Other than that, we are out of here see you guys cue that music quick danny do a dance that's our music now i'm gonna make that our music now <laughs>